afternoon everyone this is Tony from Her Homestead Skills. Well today was the day to complete chores that I started uh, yesterday for one thing. So I finished my um, chicken stock. I, I strained it and I did get five quart jars <laughs> and they went in the fridge with a plastic cap rather than uh, a metal one. You know not that there's any issues with a metal one but um, it's, it's just a whole lot easier using a one-piece rather than a two-piece when it goes in the fridge like that. So that was done and uh, I'm gonna slice up my soap that I made yesterday and I'll probably show you how I do that although I'm sure uh, a number of you that have been watching my videos for a while have already seen how that's done before somebody knew perhaps it would be of interest. Now today was also a day for catching up on other chores. Oh and yesterday I did go out and get my haircut fixed. The last cut I had just didn't feel right, wasn't sitting right, wasn't working right and you know that there's something wrong but you can't pinpoint it but it just it was a bad cut and uh, I happen to go to the salon that I had used to frequent but uh, the fellow that used to cut my hair gave up after COVID. Um, he was an old fellow anyway and I guess he was close to retiring and decided not to go back after the COVID lockdowns and of course salons were shut down during that period just like uh, anyone else. And many many hairdressing shops and salons <laughs> have never reopened. Well this one did because it's in a mall but um, not all the same people work there that uh, were there before. And this fellow gave me good cuts and I went to somebody else for a while and it just never seemed right. I mean she wanted to do her thing and I let her and I wasn't happy with it and uh, well eventually I let it grow out and and I just kept saying just do it straight cut, straight cut, but she'd always make the back longer. So basically that's where I went to fix was to get the back cut. And it turns out that one side was longer than the other, that she cut this side too short and it still has to come back in. So yeah, I won't be going back to her. But that happens. Um, got that out of the way. I feel better. I always like a good cut. I don't care if you know anything else if, if I have a bad hair day but if you have a good cut everything works and uh, so what else did I do oh yeah today was just chore day I also stopped by got some gas at Costco because it's cheaper there and uh, also at Canadian Tire I stopped in to get some uh, quick start I needed the quick start for my little rototiller that I bought recently because it's one of those pull start things and I just can't seem to start it no matter how many times I pull I could rip my arm off and I can't start these darn things. But I do remember that uh, we used to have a lawn mower that was like that and it was fine if Mark was cutting the lawn he was always able to get it started or uh, if I need you know if I decided to do the lawn one day and he was there he could get it started for me. But if I had to do it on my own hmm, just couldn't do it so this quick start always worked. And I got Mark to show me where to uh, use the quick start on the uh, little rototiller. And uh, I'll clean up my garden before the fall is out. You know, sort it out, tear everything out. I don't normally do that, but I think this year I'll clean everything up and cover it. So hopefully the weeds won't be so bad next year. The only spots that I won't cover, obviously, is where I put garlic down for the year. So I've got that out of the way. Hopefully I shall have no trouble starting that unit. <laughs> and uh, you know, running chores, emptying. Oh yeah, I took all the empties back to the store to get a refund. Got a whooping $9, yay. So not only did I put $9 in my pocket, I cleaned up a mess and <laughs> always like that. I hate having bottles and things lying around that you have to deal with and have to get rid of. So. I did that today too. What else? Oh yeah, okay. Uh, Mark's chicken stock is done and of course I had to make some more yogurt for myself. Having just come off a regiment of antibiotics which you know to take care of an infection unfortunately it messes with your stomach and I understand it could take a minimum a month sometimes to 
get things back to normal if they do. Sometimes it could take even up to six months. And one of the things they recommend is to eat uh, fermented foods. And I'm not all that fussy on eating my sauerkraut on a consistent basis or my uh, fermented pickles, although they're nice. You still just want a taste of it here and there. But uh, yogurt, I can eat yogurt three times a day. You know, mind you, got to keep it small, so <laughs> I'm just not eating huge quantities, but I can certainly eat yogurt. And I have been going through a lot of it, so I'm trying to consistently, like Mark is with his chicken stock, I'm doing the yogurt thing for now. I'm sure eventually that will go away, but right now I think it's probably good for me health-wise to stay on the yogurt regimen uh, as long as I feel like doing it. Now, I don't know if everyone's heard about the rail strike in Canada, which uh, is pretty serious for us, actually. Uh, there has been uh, those that say the government should get involved and put an end to it. The government refuses to do so. They would like to see a resolution between the two parties, between the union and the uh, management. Um, but it's been ongoing for nine months and they have not been able to come up with a solution. So they uh, did strike. Today was the first day they went on strike. And that costs us huge. Every day that they're out is huge money, uh, huge losses. Uh, we have quite the trade going between Canada and the U.S. via rail and I think it's going to hurt us economically in a big bad way and with the economy not being all that strong or stable right now. Not a good time but um, perhaps that's part of the negotiation ploy. I don't know. Hopefully that will get resolved soon and uh, not have too serious a detriment to our economy. And uh, of course tonight is the last night of the DNC. I did watch a bit of it and uh, I don't know, Bill Clinton, he's the same age as Donald. He looks like an old coot. Kind of kind of like um, Biden. They both look very old. Why is it that Trump doesn't have that aged look? He's got a lot of energy and uh, it looks like he's like the Energizer Bunny he just keeps going and going and going and going where these guys are all falling by the wayside and they're old. So anyway, I mean, yes, Bill Clinton's a good speaker and uh, I heard a little bit of Shapiro. I didn't watch all of Bill Clinton and I heard a little bit of Shapiro as well. Another good speaker. Obama definitely is a good speaker and so is Michelle. And I think that's what they have on that side is people who know how to communicate. They're very well spoken. They say all, they say things. Um, it's not what people say, it's what they do. So anyway, even here we have the same political push and pull between liberal and conservative and uh, I think if there was an election today, the Conservatives would certainly win and Trudeau would be gone. We're tired of Trudeau. He's been around for too many years. Unfortunately, in Canada, there is no limitation on how long the Prime Minister can serve. So um, his, his own father served for a number of years, uh, retired from politics, and then came back again. So, yeah, it's... Uh, Far, far, he was in there far too long, and in the end, he went out, and uh, they were glad to see him go too. So, like father, like son, they just don't know when to leave while the leaving is good. Hanging on for dear life, but I don't know why. I mean, I guess these people, once they get power, they don't want to give it up. But there is a time. It's funny, I always got the impression watching Bush give up to, uh, Ob to Obama that he was glad to be leaving, saying, adios, thanks, I've had my fill, goodbye now. It, it just did that, he never said that, but that seemed to come across to me as I was watching him. But uh, these folks today, they just want to hang on forever, and uh, that's not a good thing either. Okay. 
So I am going to uh, do the rest of what I've got to do here today. Basically is cut this soap and then I'm going to deliver it. Okay, I have two of these um, marble cheese boards that I picked up at the thrift store. As a matter of fact, I don't think I paid $3 a piece for them. And I have kind of masked them off, giving me, I think, an inch and a quarter on this one and an inch on that one so that I can um, butt the soap against that and get the size I want. But I'll probably go with the larger one again. So, first things first. Oh, take the soap out. Okay, and I can clean this up later. I'll worry about that one after I've got this all done. Great. Just peeled back all the wax paper. And now you can see why I use two cutting boards because that will uh, allow me to balance it. Okay, and pretty simple actually. Slide it over. and cut. And there you have a beautiful clean cut. Now the soap is a bit on the yellow side and that is because I used olive oil which is rather green I guess and I could have used a whitener in it to have it be less yellow but I just decided to leave it natural. Now you will get a different color I suppose, depending on the kind of oils you use. I got interrupted, sorry about that. So I'm back now and I'm going to continue to cut here. And it's cutting beautifully. Now these are larger bars than what you would get if you were buying them. But once again, I don't care. I'm not selling these. I could weigh them, but it's, it's pointless in my respect because I don't really care. Okay, trying to keep it straight. Oh, I think I was saying something about <clears throat> you could have different color soap without it adding any colors based on the oils you use. And in reality, you can use just about any oils to make soap. The thing is, what oils you use will determine the quality of the soap, whether it's bubbly, whether it's uh, um, cleansing, whether it's moisturizing, you know, all those, all those things that you look for in a good bar of soap would uh, determine based on, you know, it, it's based on what it's made from. So what oils are used and there are some standard ones like the coconut oil and lard or tallow is always good to have some of that in there. Olive oil is always good to use some olive oil. So you can come up with your own formula and once you do you can continue to use that. I always like to put a little bit of shea butter in there as well. So okay I'm almost done here. And it really takes no time at all to cut this. And I actually don't bother to clean the edges, don't bother to make it look pretty. I just cut it and, and that's the end of that. I mean, I can wait till it dries a bit and then shave the edges, but I'm not marketing these. And there is no point in 
wasting any of it. Now, some are a little thicker than others. Some are a little thinner. I don't care. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, thirteen, fourteen. Ooh, sixteen. Yeah, that's about right. Perfect. And no leftovers, no trimming the edges. I don't care. Now, they do have to cure for four to six weeks. So you always want to make enough ahead of time that you have plenty. And yes, you can almost use it right away, but it would be a little bit harsh and it would be uh, dissipated. You'd wear it out real fast. So no point in doing that. The soap would melt very quickly. Okay, so I managed to get them all on this tray. Okay, all that's left is the cleanup.